Hey guys, <clears throat> it's Dr. Brian Mann, uh, University of Miami. I uh, just wanted to come in and talk about something here briefly. This is a little different. Normally I'll you know, make a little slideshow for you guys, etc. Uh, but uh, long story short, what I wanted to talk about today is periodization because there's been some stuff, and some of it's from the students, some of it's from social media, uh, etc. But man, there, there's some major discrepancies out there when dealing with periodization that just showing like there's a, a major... Uh, a disconnect somehow between the information that exists out there and, and reality. Now, some people are thinking that, you know, periodization is, uh, golly, I, you know, one, one of the descriptions I heard was that it's just some uh, it's, you know, abstract concept to sell expensive textbooks. Well, it, that's not it, man. Uh, the term was actually coined, uh, to my understanding, by Tudor Bompa. And all that it is, is, well, let's look at the name. Uh, periodization, the process of putting into periods, right? So uh, there's just concentrated blocks of training. It just means that there's a plan. Now, it doesn't mean that it is about uh, X sets at X reps at X intensity, and then you progress up from there. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to follow uh, anatomical adaptation, hypertrophy, strength, and power. It doesn't mean that you have to do only block uh, program. It doesn't mean any of these things, guys. Periodization is just breaking into periods for fo more focused training, right? It is just a way to kind of balance everything out. Uh, you know, it's biblical that, you know, there's a time for work, a time for play, a time for rest, a time for war, a time for peace. You know, that, this is true in any part of a person's life. Training is no different. There should be periods where it's lower specificity and periods where it's greater specificity. Why? Well, let's just look at, uh, let's take the ankle joint, for instance. During a season, uh, you are going to start getting some dorsiflexion restrictions because if nothing, no other reason that uh, a sport like maybe American football or volleyball where they traditionally will either use uh, like uh, a heavy duty brace or a lot of athletic tape to lock the ankle into position to prevent it from rolling, to prevent uh, that anterior talofibular ligament uh, from tearing an ankle sprain, right? You're just basic uh, inversion ankle sprain. <clears throat> well, as a result of the season, you're going to have a lack of dorsiflexion. That's just what happens. Uh, so then you were going to need to do things to recreate that ankle mobility. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a period where you're going to want to do things that are specifically just for that. Uh, and then all of a sudden it's better. And then we can move into training in different modalities and means. And I bring that one up specifically because of, uh, you know, that article that I wrote for Simply Faster on squat depth, the periodization of squat depth, that if we look at the biomechanical joint angle specificity, that the quarter squat and half squat more closely resemble the sprints and the jumps. With trained individuals at a uh, high level high school or highly trained uh, junior college division two athletes, uh, they saw far better transfers from the half squat and quarter squat to improvement in sprint speed and jumping ability than did the full squat. So, you know, there you go. Uh, that's specific versus general physical preparedness. So then that brings into another thing, you know, uh, uh, it doesn't have to even just be percentages. This is something that I brought up to my students uh, the other day is that, you know, there, there are some people who are uh, highly entrenched in the Soviet means of training that do more with the periodization of the exercises than they do with intensities. Uh, so that, yeah, what do I mean there? Well, early off season, it's a full squat, right? No doubt about it. Just full squat, get strong. Make sure you've got those requisite joint ranges of motion for the knee, for the hip, for the ankle. Uh, those are going to be extremely important. And you've got to establish them now because any time that you decelerate what, uh, to change direction in team sport, what do you have to do? Drop your center of mass and lean the opposite direction. Well, if unfortunately that uh, dropping in the center of mass uh, and leaning the opposite direction happens more at the hip and the knee than it does the ankle, then we're going to have a lot of anterior tibial uh, Transla anterior translation of the tibia. That would be a bad thing because it's part of the mechanism of the ACL tear, and that would all have been fixed if we would have fit, 
you know, messed with the uh, improved the ankle range of motion first. So, you know, we've got to have a little bit of everything, right? We've got to have the general methodology that is going to lay the found work for the specific. Just like uh, if you are just going to do uh, the traditional intensity and volume manipulations, you're going to have to start out at the lower intensities and higher volumes to build up some tissue tolerance. Make sure that the connective tissue can handle the, uh, the greater strains later on. So whenever I get down to it, what am I saying? I'm saying that periodization is not dead. It doesn't need an AED. There, the, some of the arguments that are uh, that people are throwing out against it actually they periodize, right? They just change the specificity of the exercise rather than the percentages and sets and reps. And that's cool, man. It's a big space. There's a room for everybody. I, you know, this is one of those areas why I where I don't see that the why we're having this huge argument. It's it's not even apples versus oranges. It's like, well, I like the Honeycrisp apple. I like the Golden Delicious. I like the Red Delicious. Uh, and yeah, some people like the Granny Smith. Some people like Fuji. Who cares, man? We're all talking about apples. It's not like we're talking about uh, you know, bananas and oranges and peaches and mangoes. You know, we're, it's all just different types of apples that we're talking about from the periodization. Uh, everybody has their personal taste. If you want to, to cycle and, and periodize by intensity and volumes, cool. You want to do it by exercises, cool. You want to have a four-phase model, cool. You want to just look at GPP, SPP, cool. You know what's important is that you plan everything out and you begin with the end in mind. And then you just make sure that all of your progressions get you up there. Uh, and what would be the end goal? Well, the end goal should be sport performance. So what's going to enhance the sport performance? That's just something to think about. Uh, yeah, if you like this information, you can obviously come learn from me at uh, the University of Miami. Uh, you know, we've got an undergraduate program, a master's program. Uh, the, the master's program is uh, in applied exercise physiology. There is a strength and conditioning track within there. Uh, and then, you know, we've got a doctoral program in exercise physiology. I don't have funding for students yet. Uh, I'm working on that. Uh, got some grants that are in the, the mix, but that'll be a few years before it'll pop up. I've also got uh, online coaches education courses. We've got the eight week course uh, that's running right now. Uh, hopefully that the students are enjoying it. And then we've got uh, coming up soon, we'll have some choose your own adventures, right? That, that's basically like, hey, I want to take these three modules and put them in together for one course for myself. And uh, that'll be coming open soon. Uh, it's actually slower than it should be right now. And that's, uh, that's on me. Uh, busy. What can I say? Uh, if you guys have more questions, comments, hey, what do you think, man? You know, what is your thoughts with uh, periodization? This is just my opinion. That's why I didn't even throw up slides or anything. Uh, yeah, let's uh, have a discussion in the comments below.